The sixth man to walk on the moon, a PhD from MIT in aeronautical engineering. He was there at MIT when they were building the lunar uh, module, the lunar lander. Okay, so when Apollo 13 had its problems, uh, Edgar told me that he was three people in that movie with Tom Hanks because he had been there while they were constructing the lunar module at MIT. And, um, and he'd be learning from them in case later on there was something that went wrong with it. And that's actually what happened in Apollo 13. And Edgar had on his wall the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest award that a civilian can earn. And this was after Edgar had retired from, um, from the military, uh, from the Navy. R Richard Nixon, the U.S. president at that time, gave him that award. Okay, uh, and but more importantly for Edgar, after he came back from the moon, he had a um, a paranormal experience out in space. Okay, uh, it's called a Samadhi experience, where all of a sudden he had like universal knowledge that it, we're all interrelated. You know, there's no separateness, and he was like, you know, and all uh, it came, and then like after a minute or so, it just disappeared, and he was like, what the hell was that? You know. And so when he came back, he wanted to learn what had happened to me, to him. And he learned from a professor of religion that is called a Samadhi experience. And that's written in the, uh, in the Indian text, the Vedic text. Yeah. Uh, he said that this happened, to, this has happened to other astronauts as well. That, that yeah, correct, not, correct. They've not spoke about it, but yeah. this has happened to other astronauts. Oh yeah. Yeah. He told me that um, many of the U S astronauts and cosmonauts have had paranormal experiences in space. Um, he told me tons of details because I eventually was at his house over 20 different times. And so anyway, so I give him a call. Oh, what I was wanting to say, what Edgar should be recognized more than anything else was that he had started the Institute for Noetic Sciences. And this is uh, now the world's leading academic research institute on the psi phenomena, okay? Um, commonly known as ESP. Okay, and yeah. um, and also they, they they dabble a little bit with uh, with the paranormal channeling um, uh, um, and other aspects of the paranormal. So that's the Institute for Noetic Sciences, uh, major academic research institute. And so um, so I give Edgar a call like four hours later because I was uh, shit scared, you know, to give him a call. I knew who he, who he was, right? So he goes, uh, Ray, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, Well, I'm going to go to work. He says, uh, can you take some time off tomorrow and come and see me? And um, I said, sure. He says, I live in uh, in Lake Worth, Florida, which is like 90 minute drive. He says, you could take the turnpike, take the ex exit. And it was like, you know, 90 minutes from where I lived. And he says, how about tomorrow at 10 o'clock? So here I was uh, a little bit more than 48 hours after that initial experience. And I was at the home of Dr. Edgar Mitchell. And I was there for a total of six hours. And he told me everything about his life. He just went into so many details. You know, you, you tell me about Edgar and I'll tell you, <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, his parents earned, uh, owned two stores in Roswell, okay? Uh, uh, Nevada. One on uh, the northern end of town, one on the southern end of town. These were agricultural stores, supply stores, okay? He was there with the Roswell crash. He was a senior in high school. He had, uh, I think it was June, maybe it was. He had just graduated, and he was on his way to go to Carnegie Mellon University, okay? Um, he learned how to fly airplanes uh, as a teenager because he worked for the local airport, and he was paid in flight lessons instead of money, okay? Wow. He had, uh, was part right. of Chuck, Chuck Yeager's uh, test pilots, okay? Um, and, uh, I mean, everything he told me, you know, he showed me the pictures of his mother that she drew of their house in, in Roswell, you know, the living room, that old black and white TV, you know, and he was telling me all about it. And he just went on and on about his life. You know, he told me tons of experiences uh, as a, a national astronaut, tons of stuff. And so then after like hours had passed by, then he said, Ray, uh, tell me about your experience. And I realized later on that he was doing that was to make me feel comfortable. You know, it's like he opened himself up yeah. totally. And then I opened up myself totally. And when I was telling him all this stuff, he didn't even blink an eye. I found out later that he has spoken with hundreds of experiencers. Okay. But that's a part of, of Edgar that no one knew about. They knew the UFO Edgar that 
spoke publicly about UFOs, you know, and Roswell and things like that, but they didn't know Edgar that had been working with contactees, you know, over many years. So at the end of it all, Edgar, after he listened to me, heard my story, what had happened to me, all my experience, he says, look, Ray, you were given uh, a mandate, you know, specific instructions of what you need to do. <laughs> and he says, Rudy and I, this is Dr. Rudy Shields, already discussed it, and we will be your scientific advisors. And he says, as a matter of fact, I also have a whole large group of PhD, PhDs, most of them are physicists, and they can, can come and help us. They will also join us as advisors, right? And uh, I, I didn't make the connection, you know, like me given a mission to do, you know? And it was Edgar that had suggested that, you know, we need to form an organization uh, with all of our advisors and let's put our heads together as to, you know, uh, what, what they told you to do, you know, and we could, you know, work this out. I said, but Edgar, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. And he goes, don't worry, you'll figure it out. It always happens that way. And so when I left his house, I said, this man's batshit crazy, you know? I said, what the fuck is he talking about, you know? And Rudy, another crazy, you know, MF, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck, you know? And so anyway, I give Mary Rodwell a call, you know, let her know what had just happened, right? And, and she was like, you know, this is unbelievable, right, you know? And so uh, she knew about Rudy because she had given the information to Rudy. But what had happened is that she had sent me an email saying, look, Ray, um, uh, I gave Rudy your information. Is it okay for him to call you? You know? And what happened was that Rudy jumped the gun and he called me before I had gotten back to Mary. Yeah, Mary, you know, it's okay. You know, let, let, tell him to call me, you know? And so that's how all this thing started. Okay. So like about a, um, a, a, a few days later, this was, that and when I was at Edgar's house, I think it was like a Wednesday. That initial experience was on a Monday. Rudy called me on Tuesday. That Saturday, Saturday morning, it was only a few days later. I woke up. In my head was exactly what I needed to do. Okay, exactly like in detailed <laughs> what I needed to do. So I went to the computer. I typed it all up, and what it was was. Um, a research methodology of how do you go about doing the world's first academic research study of UFO contact experiencers, okay? Because what had happened was that, um, as I told you before, you know, uh, I have an academic background, okay? Yep. And so when these things were happening to me, I said, let me try to research what has been written about it academically, okay? And I couldn't find anything. Certainly there was only uh, two very small statistical studies. Okay, and I won't mention them. They were tiny. Uh, one had 50 people, another one had 85 people. Okay, so there was literally nothing. Um, there, there was a book by Dr. John Mack uh, titled Passport to the Cosmos. Dr. John Mack was a professor at Harvard University, a professor of psychiatry. And that's how Rudy got involved because uh, Dr. John Mack asked him one time, he says, Rudy, you that study astrophysics, I am having all these people that are telling me uh, uh, look, Dr. Mack, I was brought to another reality, another multiverse, another dimension, you know? So he goes to Rudy and says, Rudy, is it true that there su exists such a thing as other dimensions? Is physics talking about that? And Rudy said, yes. You know, as a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> okay. That there's these various theories of the multiverse. And so that brought a relationship between Dr. John Mack and Rudy. And then where they were trying to kick Dr. John Mack out of Harvard University, because he had uh, published a book on UFO uh, contact experiencers, uh, they tried to kick him out of Harvard. And he was a tenured professor. He had also won the Pulitzer Prize. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the top prizes in literature, okay? So this is a very influential man, okay? Uh, highly respected, a professor, a full professor of psychiatry at Harvard, uh, at the Harvard Medical School. Not, not even Harvard University, the Harvard Medical School. And so uh, during this inquisition, uh, Rudy testified before this board uh, that, um, that yes, there is such a thing as a multiverse, that yes, there are probably, you know, non-human intelligence out there, you know, uh, and he explained that we're finding these exoplanets, these new planets, you know, every day now, you know, and, um, and basically educated these folks that, look, you know, physics is talking about these things, you know. And so eventually they didn't kick Dr. Mack out, but that set the lasting relationship between Dr. John Mack and Rudy Shields. 
So, right. Can, uh, can I can yeah. I ask before we quickly move on to the next next part of this? Yeah. yeah. Um, when you was when you were speaking with uh, Egg Mitchell, did you uh, did he ever mention that NASA is aware of what's going on? No, no, no. no. Uh, he never told me that they discovered UFOs on the moon. You know, uh, he did mention what he did mention was that uh, astronauts had seen uh, had had paranormal experiences, you know, in space and the cosmonauts. OK, and uh, in terms of UFOs, he says, yes, astronauts have seen UFOs, but all of them that he knew had seen UFOs on Earth, not in right. the moon or out in space. Oh, OK. And so um, uh, now, mind you, uh, Edgar was a, a, a retired a uh, military officer, okay? And, um, and, and, you know, they had their own oaths of secrecy, that type of thing. So if, if something did happen, he wouldn't be telling me. He wouldn't be telling anybody, you know? Uh, but Yeah, but, there, there was a funny thing where NASA, did, didn't NASA, there was, we were talking about prosecuting because he had a camera. Oh, what, what it was was that um, he actually showed me on his wall um, um, what, what was a common practice with the other astronauts that had gone to the moon, the other two previous Apollos, uh, they had basically torn up parts of the lunar module when it had hooked up to the, um, the part that actually flew back, okay? They left the bottom part on the moon, okay? So they would take different parts out and bring it up, okay, as like souvenirs, okay? Yep. So what he had... Yeah, he, what he showed me that was on the wall was that little handle, you know, that operated because he was the operator, you know, that going down, you know, operating it, you know, and uh, the speed and direction and all of that stuff. So he basically tore that, um, unhinged it, you know, whatever instruments he had, and he brought that up. OK, so what happened was that after I forgot how many years, um, Nastra, uh, NASA had requested that from him and actually had filed legal papers, you know. Uh, yeah. This is many years later, you know, and what it was was that he was talking about, you know, UFOs and Roswell and, and the moon and, all, you know, uh, 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 what other astronauts were talking about. Also, one of the other astronauts um, that was a, a Gemini uh, astronaut, uh, Cooper, Gordon Cooper, yep. then then went out and talked publicly that, um, that when he was a test pilot in Chuck Yeager's group, I think it was, uh, that Edgar had worked with. Edgar knew all these folks, you know. Um, that he was a test pilot there. He saw a UFO came down, landed, okay, um, uh, on um, on the uh, where they, do, they were testing these planes, and he had filmed it, okay. So Edgar had told me all about that too, you know, before I even came across his video, and so so apparently somebody in NASA didn't like him talking about these things publicly, and so they they wound up settling, you know, making an arrangement because. Um, all these politicians became involved because Edgar was a Presidential Medal of Freedom winner, which is the yeah. uh, that I just talk about a little the while highest, I I yeah. yeah, the the highest award that any civilian can can earn because he had saved the crew of Apollo 13. Edgar told me it was three people in that movie, and so finally, you know, these politicians came to bat for him, and um, and, uh, and and let it be. But he showed me that plaque, the Presidential Medal of, of Freedom, which is a small plaque, you know. And then he showed me that handle and a couple of other things that he had stripped from the moon. I don't recall the other ones, but there was uh, some other gadgetry. I don't know what the hell it was, you know. Some other yeah, he, took, he took the, the stick, didn't he, as well? You know, oh, the stick, that's the one that I recognized that was on the wall. Yeah. And there was something else, some other electronic stuff that I, I, I just don't recall. But I remember yes. there was like two or three other things there, you know. Yeah, I just I just wondered if he, he happened to slip anything that you know NASA is very much aware. Of. No, no, no. He, uh, um, you know, he never told me anything. You know, uh, but he did tell me about the paranormal experiences in space and that astro other astronauts had seen UFOs while they were pilots. Okay, um, and and Gordon Cooper he told me specifically about. Um, but um, but in terms of the details of the other astronauts. Um, he he just told me that they saw UFOs, but on Earth, not um, not on the Moon or up there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that part is classified, and he never told me, you know. But he never did. So anyway, uh, getting back to the story here to finish it, 
I wrote up uh, um, a detailed description of, of the world's first comprehensive academic research study of UFO contact experiencers, okay? I sent it to Edgar, Dr. Rudy Shields, and to Mary. And I said, what do you guys think of this? And they all said, this is fantastic. Let's go with it. So I said, Mary, would you like to join us? Mary Rodwell. And at that time, you know, she said yes. And then a few days later, she came up with the name Free. Okay. Um, um, and so uh, within a few weeks, we had lots of PhD academics that joined us and, um, and some of the world's leading researchers. Like, uh, uh, I think we had a conversation off the air uh, a couple of days ago, uh, uh, Kathleen Martin. Yes. Uh, uh, very, very well-known uh, uh, okay. researcher. Uh, Dr. Leo Sprinkle. He was the first uh, PhD academic to write an article about abductions. This was in the 60s. He, he, he wrote about this. And um, um, Barbara Lamb, uh, a woman that's been studying UFO abductees for over 40 years, okay? And this other lady, Denise Stoner. And we had a whole bunch of PhDs. We had neuroscientists. We had uh, physicists. We had PhD psychologists. Uh, all joined us and we all worked together and said, how do we go about beginning to research this, okay? So I I, uh, I laid out the framework of what um, we're gonna be doing. And there we started to come up with questions, with questions, with questions, with questions.